Uh, during your pregame scouting, handing out cards about what your robot can do and what your team, was cap your team is capable of doing is also pretty important. This way you're getting the message across to other teams about how capable your robot is and you give them like a thing that they can refer back to uh, when they're scouting themselves. So the next slide. All right, so the next thing is driver strategies. So on my team, I'm part of the driver team. So one of the main things that we do is we practice a lot. We practice about an hour and a half for three times a week, each, uh, each meeting before tournaments. This allows us to reduce anywhere from five to, oh. this allows us to reduce anywhere from five to 10 seconds off of 30 second tasks. And this allows us to become more effective and pro uh, productive in game. Uh, all right, so a really useful thing is practicing the different scenarios. So say you can, an example of this is laying out blocks or objectives on the on the field in certain ways so that your driver team gets a more, uh, they get practice in having reflexes and uh, adapting to certain situations. Another good thing is scrimmaging with other teams. If you, ha if you have local teams that are around you that are able to make it to wherever you're located to have scrimmages or like mock tournaments, this is useful in creating like in-game, like real life scenarios for your drive team to accommodate to and practice upon. Use, if you have the, another good thing is if you have extra parts and extra time, you can create a defensive or a dummy robot and this will, and you can give this to a different uh, person on your team and they can drive against your driver team. This is a good way to improve your driver team's uh, reflexes and ability to adapt to in-game scenarios. Um, before matches at the tournament, a key thing is talking among your team and talking with your potential alliance partners in future matches about scoring strategies and about what you want to be doing in game. This sort of sets the, uh, the board, the boundaries as to what each team is doing and you're not like scrambling at the last minute to figure out what each team is capable of doing and what each team is doing in game. Practicing autonomous either at home or at the tournament with your alliance partners is also pretty key. This way you don't potentially uh, scramble at the last minute before a game to set up autonomous. You have it ready to go and you can just set put on the field and you're done. Um, make sure your driver coach is pr uh, focused on time and relaying information from your driver team to your alliance partner's driver team. This is very key in making sure that the actual drivers are focused on the game and they're putting the most effort into the game without having to worry about alternative or uh, other situations that shouldn't really matter to them. And then next slide. All right, so in-game scouting. In-game scouting is really key as to validating what each team is capable of doing. So a good way to get good redundant information and to make sure your information is accurate is to having either one person or one scouting team per red side and blue side. This way you're not missing out on any in, like valuable information and this way you're getting accurate information. Record what each team did in autonomous. This is key for you to know during future matches, say like during semifinals, uh, quarterfinals and finals. This way you know what each team is capable of doing and you're able to effectively set up autonomous strategies and plans for in-game. In Teleop, record what each teams have done overall. This way you know what each team is specialized in doing. Say like if one team is capable of scoring in the high bucket and you know you're capable of scoring in the middle bucket, that you know that this will be a good combination for potential alliance selection. And make sure your data is concise to the, and to the point. Some people say that the more data you collect, the more accurate and more easy it will be to create a final plan. In this situation, it's not necessarily true. The more data you have, it could be the harder to sift through it all and come up with a defined team that you know you'll be capable with. If your data is more concise and to the point, you'll be able to do this quicker and you'll be able to do this in a more concise fashion. And the last thing is make sure that towards like after about 80% of the matches are complete, that's when you should start uh, your, that's when you should start creating your like list of who you want to potentially pick or who you want to potentially pick yourself. But do you record more than one match for each team? We usually usually do. Um, we record typically around our scouts are on the fields for about seventy percent to eighty percent of the matches, and then once that's done, uh, we start trying to rank the teams.